Life is not permanent, so always live in the now. Today I'm emphasizing the statement with a visual example. I visit one of the most magnificent abandoned mansions I have ever seen in Belgium, dating back to the Victorian era. This was once the family home of Mrs. Cornelia and her husband that had a lucrative business in beekeeping and thereby generated a lot of wealth in their time. The years may have left their mark on the house, but the main entrance hall, with its cherished ornate ceilings and unique walls, feels frozen in time. Dining chairs are poised around an elegant dining table, as though waiting for the home's residents to ever return. And mementos from those who once lived within these walls still linger on surfaces and on cupboards. After being married with her husband for many years, she gave birth to a child at a later age called Monica. At a certain point in her life, she lost her husband but luckily still had her lovely daughter Monica taking care of her. But as she grew older, she started coping increasingly with her health and few years thereafter, she was taken to a nursing home where she drew her last breath at the age of 87 years old. Get carried away on another tour through a graceful desolate place as I will bring all faded grandeur and precious memories of Mrs. Cornelia and her family back to life. Alright, so good morning everyone. I just met up with an American. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's your first time in Euro, right? Very first time. So this is Carter from the YouTube channel Big Banks, right? Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, today we're gonna explore a little bit in Belgium. And is this your first time properly exploring in Euro? Yes, first time ever being in Europe. So first time exploring as well. Bro, we're gonna make it a good one today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go for it. I'm ready. The place you're about to see today absolutely mesmerized me. In three months, I'm back again in Belgium and I have this glorious abandoned mansion to show you. To start off with the story, it was once owned by Mrs. Cornelia, a woman just living an everyday life, but she inherited a lot of wealth and they actually had a business in beekeeping. Not something you hear every day. Now, she actually had a husband, they were married. And on a later age, she actually gave birth to a child called Monica. And eventually, she, uh, her husband passed away. And she was living alone, but she still had Monica taking care of her. Because at a certain age, she started coping with her health. Very sadly, we found her medication inside, but also documents that she was transported per ambulance. Uh, what else to say about her? 
she reached an age of 87 when she eventually passed away, not in this mansion, but in a nursing home where she spent her last days while Monica was taking care of her and her health. Uh, they were a Catholic family, as many people were in Belgium in the 19th and 20th century and before, of course. The mansion is a typical example of a Victorian mansion. It's full of beautiful antique pieces and furniture and everything has remained entirely in place. It's one of the most beautiful and precious mansions I've seen in Belgium throughout five years of urban exploration. So I'm more than excited to show you this place today and I genuinely hope you enjoy it. So let's start the adventure. So I hope everybody is ready to see one of the most beautiful mansions I've ever seen, filmed and shared in Belgian lands. We're gonna start off in this beautiful living room of this Victorian mansion. And as you can see, there are still plenty of antique items and furniture left behind. Wow. This place is a real gem and I'm so happy that I have the chance to explore and see this beautiful mansion today of Mrs. Cornelia. Over here we have the grandfather clock of the French brand Ugly, often recognized by Tempus Fugit. Time flies in Latin. And everything inside this place is still totally pristine, veritably untouched by any human. People have very well respected this place throughout the years. And I'm just so delighted to see that. Look over here. This cover. You can see some cobwebs over there as well. The beautiful thing about this mansion for me is not only the fact that it has remained entirely frozen in time and the fact that everything is untouched and so well in place, but also the fact that it's full of charm and really gives me a, a very homely and comfy feeling. This was such a nice home to live one day. We've got a lot of ornaments and everything also still standing on the cupboard with beautiful wooden carvings in its design. And then check inside. We still got all the porcelain work and everything. Some beautiful china cups. Over here, we've got silver cutlery and everything still left inside the drawers. Wow, <laughs> it's truly unbelievable. And it's so hard to imagine that it has all been left in this state and hasn't been reclaimed by the daughter Monica or any other inheritance that might still exist. Of course, I'm not gonna judge because there can be multiple reasons for it. Wow! This is absolutely unbelievable. We still got all the crystal ware, glasses, and even some more tiny plates and cups standing inside these doors on these shelves. So let's continue in this truly enchanting place. And also have a look at the ornate details in the center of the ceiling. The finishings inside this mansion, the furniture are absolutely precious. And probably in this tiny cabinet, there is also still a lot left. Yeah, we've got a liquor bottle. I think this is uh, for a hot water dispenser or coffee. Some candle holders there. 
By the way, there's also a lot of dust on the table for the people watching at home and might think this place isn't abandoned at all and it's dust free. It's not. It's been abandoned around the turn of 2015 to 2016, around New Year's. Mrs. Cornelia had to leave this house and she went to a local nursing home where she was scared until her last days when she eventually passed away at the age of 87. And oh my, oh my Lord. This place is truly sparking my mind. And I'm just so happy that it's well respected. Oh, look at these arcs over here with curtains leading to the next area. But before we continuing, I want to point out numerous beautiful things in this room. For example, look at the beautiful Louis XV seat over here, stuffed on the sides. Up Hall Street as well. Also look at these beautiful chairs with the wicker in their design, the finishings on top. Then over there we have a typical Belgium stove, very specific for Belgium. Those wooden elephant ornaments, they look African to me. And you can also see a dust mark. I think there used to be a painting one day. But apparently it's removed or replaced somewhere else now. Look over there, we also got some tiny stained glass windows in a rectangle shape. What was this for? Oh my gosh. This is another completely silverware set of cutlery with knives, forks. Truly unbelievable. And look over here. It's still entirely filled with Codor chocolates. And then lastly, to finish off this magical room, I want to give you a little overview from it. And then on the wall, we can see some clearer signs of decay of the wallpaper and the humidity and leakage problems that have manifested this place. So although this place might seem very pristine looking, which it is from the naked eye, there are definitely some minor signs of decay. Although they are still quite limited, I sincerely hope that any legal owners will take care of the place very soon, and that they can hopefully sell this beautiful property that it will get a new life and other people will get to live in it once again. And one thing I did definitely not hope is that they will decide to demolish it. It would be such a bummer. Because it's a truly special place. And especially for Belgium. Well, we're continuing to the next room connected to their living area. Over here, let's look at a tiny television from Sony. Remote control over here. Some duck ornaments standing on top. We've got some stained glass in the door over here as well. Oh, and then look on the finishings on top of the wall. They're all painted birds with grapes and berries.
as I mentioned previously, these people were Roman Catholics. And religion was clearly an important subject in their life. We've got another Belgian stove over here, still with a pot on top of it to boil the water. As the stove would generate some heat, the water would eventually boil. A very traditional way to provide yourself with cooking water. I've never seen this though. What is it? It looks like it's definitely not an ashtray, but more of a medallion or something. I really don't know, but if anybody might know it, feel free to leave it down in the comment section. And then over here in the corner, we maybe have one of the most unique ceiling lamps I've ever seen. This one is definitely custom made. It's no typical Belgian style, neither it's typical French style. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely unique. I'm slowly gonna pen it out. We've got a sofa over here. A tiny painting in this gilt frame. This lamp over here is typical Belgium though. We've seen it numerous times before. Well, we can see some mold inside of these receptacles over here. Electricity is still running inside this place. Everything. Like, check it out. It's absolutely insane. Of course, we do not want this place to, to catch a fire or something. So that's why I'm turning it off again. Now many people might question themselves. Who's paying that electricity bill? Well, to all of you, that's a good question why you're wondering that. The answer is that the Belgium government provides everybody with a minimum to provide for their energy. So it's actually a gift from the Belgium state. And that's why many abandoned properties in Belgium still have electricity and power running. Wow, look over here. In this bookshelf, we've got old pictures of her husband. The man of which we haven't found a name yet. This might be a child photo of him, or it's a family ancestor. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. And much respect to these people. And the next of kin that might still be alive. Well, and then comes a very special moment. We're gonna enter their main hallway. Just pure majesty on the ceiling. Absolutely gorgeous. And so hard to believe that it's just a victim of neglect now and Nobody's living here anymore. Wow. Look at this plate. But apart from the plate, I also really love the architecture and the wallpaper. It's even a little bit hypnotizing to me, but absolutely unique and something I've never seen previously. Also again the ornate details, very minimalistic though, but they are present on the ceilings.
full of towels over here and laces. Over here as well. We've got a newspaper dating December 2014. And over here we have one of the first cobwebs. I mean, this place is so stately. Definitely not a typical Belgium home I was expecting to explore today when back in Belgium. Over there we can see the paint which is starting to peel off. Now let's check out this cabinet. There's not that much left. Some shelves have already been emptied. But look up here. We still got all their crystal again. Wow. Okay. I'm closing everything off and I really want to respect this place as much as I can and leave everything again the way I found it. So it's time to continue through this unique corridor and hallway of them. Look over here, we've got a beautiful cabinet once again with some very nice and fine carvings. Just want to check out everything, but at the same time, I don't want to go in too much detail in order to protect this place from any vandals. Look over here. We've got a picture. We have a man and two women. I'm wondering if in the middle was actually her husband. It is possible or it was just a couple that were friends of them. Wow. It's unbelievable how everything is just still left behind in the drawers. I mean, it's abandoned already for five years. That's still a quite amount of time to still be in such untouched conditions. We've got a key over here with a number. Looks like it can maybe be from a locker or something. Over here is the alarm system. Although it's still on and functioning, it's saying there is an error. But by the time you're watching this place, it's firmly locked, it's not doable anymore. And I can guarantee you, once I'm publishing this place and once you are watching it right now, it's not possible to do anymore. We've got some Napoleon candies, lemon taste, expired 2017, so. It's actually correct if we think it's been abandoned since 2016. You can probably still eat those candies for one year or something. Just look at this set. My gosh. So beautiful. Top of the table over here, we still got some coins. Some of them are old Dutch currency. Some of them are the old marks from Germany. And some of them are just euros, but they are not worth anything. Those are like pennies or something, but yeah, only worth a few cents. I will slowly go up the stairs over here to give you another beautiful perspective of this beautiful hallway. This place might be one of the most untouched places, at least definitely in the top untouched places I've ever seen. There's still a credit card or debit card over here left behind of the former owner. This is not only fascinating, but this is also worrying. If this ends up in the wrong hands, 
it can end up devastating for the family an inheritance that's still alive i'm gonna put it somewhere where hopefully nobody can find it and steal it so if you thought you've already seen everything on this floor there are even quite a lot of rooms that are still to follow I've got a door over here mostly just some general storage of them some everyday items but also some medicines and right over here we have their kitchen a quite modern kitchen with still also a quiet modern oven. A beautiful one. <laughs> Might even still be working like this is crazy. No way. Okay, I have to put this one off. How does it work? Ah, as you can see, it's still uh, like locked with security. So yeah, it's, it, it is functional. I can start it, but I'm not gonna do it <laughs> just to protect this place. Wow. Look, still all their spices. Everything is left in these drawers and cabinets. Everything. It's crazy. We even have a cooking book over here. Lots of pots and pans over here. You can obviously tell that the woman and in general the family that once lived there were, were wealthy people like. Everything is from quite expensive and high-end brands like Smack. Those are definitely expensive gas furnaces. And over here on the wall, we've got the last date hanging up on the calendar. As I mentioned, the end of 2015 and the start of 2016. Around this time, the home was left for good and she was transported to a nursing home. My gosh. <laughs> All the food products, like everything is still standing inside. Even a candy pot over there. It makes you so curious, you just want to see everything. But there, it seems that hardly anything of those items are actually missing but this is funny now uses some storage with some waffles expired in 2016 it was actually used as a way to give the food and serve it out to the living room right behind this thing over here <laughs> we still got some tiny chocolate eggs from Easter February 2016, the most recent date I've seen until now. Also a lot of plates. And where we have their sink. Another sad thing is that over there is her medication cards and she had to swallow over one, two, three, over 10 to 12 pills a day. This precious woman was seriously coping with her health and I sincerely hope that she didn't suffer too much being a widower in her last years of life. The water is also still connected. It's crazy.
crazy. Wow. A lot of cleaning products and stuff. Still smelling quite clean in here, to be honest. And from the kitchen, we're continuing our way to one door over here and one door over here. Now, this is crazy. This one is connected with the light right up there, which is going on right now. This used to be the place for all their storage of cleaning tools and stuff. Once I close it, the light switches off again. Now behind this door, we actually have stairs going down. And I haven't been here yet. So I really want to check it out. What's left behind in this basement? Wow. <laughs> we still got crates with all the beverages inside. Some Jupila beer, definitely the best bottled beer you can get in Belgium, in my opinion at least, for the local Pilsner. Milk. My, this is crazy. Fridges are even still filled like, wow. All this original storage of them is still left in the basement. We've got some uh, some fruit beers over here. It's actually raspberry flavor. Oh, it's smelling terrible. I'm doing this quickly, just for you, but have a look. <coughs> Oh my gosh, even still all the meat and everything is still rotting in there. Oh my, it's one of the worst smells I've ever experienced in an abandoned building. I'm not even over exaggerating this. I'm not checking out the other fridges, the point is clear. And it's repulsive. All the food products are still left behind. And then what do we have over here? Well, just some tiny space for additional storage. Okay, so we just came back from the basement. We still got a few rooms to check out on this floor and explore together. Over here is another corridor connected with a door to the outside. Now this is quite, <laughs> quite strange like. They've used those dry leaves, stick them on the wall, and that's how they created the wallpaper for these walls. I've never seen this, but I also like it. It's definitely very creative. And quite artsy. Right over here, we've got another bedroom. We've got a document over here from 1982. There is a name written on it as well from Guy. So maybe Guy was actually the husband's name. Who knows? Now connected to this bedroom, they had a private sink over here. And all their grooming stuff for their grooming in the morning. Wow. So plenty of stuff inside of here. Well, this was just a single person's bedroom. Maybe from their child one day. where there's also many documents inside that I do not want to point out. 
And we've got a religious statue as well. Wow. We've still got a plastic bag and a scarf hanging over here on the coat rack. Look at those lion figures. And right over here was the room where they probably did their business. We've got this wooden office desk, a stamp to mark everything on the letters. And probably it was from this room where they were actually running their business, their agricultural company in beekeeping and probably also producing honey. As a matter of fact, in Belgium, many people are actually earning their life cost with agricultural activities, definitely in the more rural parts where we are at right now. So yeah, the reason I'm not going into proper detail over here is because there are so many letters and documents. I just want to protect this place. I'll try to show everything I can from the closest perspective and finest detail. Oh, well, this drawer over here filled with umbrellas. Hard to open that one. <laughs> Wallpaper inside of here. And some more wallpaper inside this one. Oh, look at this. We even got some uh, cigarettes over here still left. Just tiny buckets. That was waiting for us behind this door. Oh. This was not a door and room for storage. As you can see, we've got many shoe boxes over there. Oh, still a lot of fabrics and clothes over here as well. Looks like there used to be a expensive bottle of wine, French wine inside of this box. Now just look at this room from this perspective. Still so hard to believe it's been vacant for more than five years now. And then finally, we're going to here. I believe this door over here is leading to the outside and it's quite stuck, so I'm just leaving it. And then over here was their tiny garage. Wow. Still got several leather shoes over here. I think they're used to stand a car inside one day. But that one is probably reclaimed by the inheritance. A home trainer, a lawn mire, some other stuff for gardening too, a washer, and still all the towels and clothes are left to dry in the washing lines over here. Absolutely crazy. I mean, look at it. where we've got some paint and other things for maintenance of this property.
Okay, so then it's time we're gonna go upstairs. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing this floor, but it's only getting better and better. We've got some beautiful bedrooms to follow for us on this floor. Just look at the jungle-ish theme of that wallpaper I previously pointed out in the main hallway. Some woodwork over here. It's continuing over there. But firstly, I want to go to this room. Check it out. Wow. <laughs> so unique again. I love all these vaulted and art shapes also over there. Now isn't that hypnotizing? <laughs> wow. This is such an uncommon style in which everything is built. Over here we can see the husband of this woman that sadly enough passed away years before her. It's hard to find a single document of this man still inside this place. The secretary's desk over here. Wow. Look at this desk even over here in the corner. It's quite hard to reach though, but it's very unique. It's full of medicine. A tiny book over there and it's just continuing all the way. I'm really in awe with this place. And what I particularly love about it is that it's just different than other mansions or any Belgian places I've seen before. I love to show you a variety of places. I really love the vanity as I mentioned, but look over here as well. Wow. <laughs> Maybe Indian or something. And look at this lamp. Beautiful piece with this child or baby that's writing in a book. We've got a receptacle hanging over here for the holy water. We can definitely see some Catholic influences and artifacts inside. There are so many ties over here. Even this fur from the woman probably. <sighs> well, it's very colorful. I think there are definitely some expensive clothes in between them. Look at this fur. Wow, oh wow. <laughs> Look at this tiny figurine or puppet hanging over here on the electric candle holder. Now we have this one person bed again. This was obviously another bedroom with a tiny TV screen over there. Some old records, cassette tapes, probably some uh, some movies around them, but I think also still some memories. And I'm actually really curious to see if this cassette tape recorder is still working. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, we got to check this out together. Let, let's give it a go. So to come back to the television, I tried it, but the electricity is not working anymore in this room, unfortunately. And I cannot seem to find uh, charge batteries for the remote control for television. So unfortunately I have to disappoint you and myself. I cannot check out the family memories that are still left behind on the tapes. But what I can check out is the next room. Let's go to there. 
And it's a quite odd room to be honest. We've got this one mattress over here. There are some stuff placed on top of it. I think it used to be another bedroom. We can clearly see some dirt in the windows over there because of decay during the years. I think this was the bedroom of a girl or a woman because of the pink doors. Oh yeah, definitely feminine clothes. Oh, over here are some suitcases, some other storage. Tiny crucifix over there on the wall. Another part of the paint that's peeling off. As you can see, wow. Look over here at these hats. Everything is still there. Just left behind. Blankets, pillows. Oh, and there's even a crucifix in its packaging. Now oh, that finally connected to this bedroom. They had a tiny toilet. And from there we can walk back to this beautiful stairway again. And lastly, we've got two other rooms to point out. And one of them is gonna be very surprising. Stay tuned. So, are you ready for the moment? Here it is. Look at this. This was clearly the main bathroom. We've got the bathtub over here, but one thing that took more of my attention is this chair over here. And what I assume is, as the lady was coping with her health, was homebound and they had sufficient amount of money. I think she had a personal stylist or somebody that did her grooming or maybe a hairdresser that was coming to her home. And this was the chair where she eventually reserved, received the treatment. Pretty beautiful. So unique, I've not seen that many times before. As you can see, we've got also all their grooming stuff. Still left behind, even two brushes over there. And right behind it, the dense network of these tiny cobwebs in between it that are starting to take shape. She might have been disabled as well, or difficult with her walking in the last days. My gosh. Yeah, that one is working too. Insane. Now lastly, we're gonna make our way to the very last room. That is right over here. Have a look at it. It's actually the biggest bed, so I think this clearly used to be the main bedroom where the couple slept together one day. Gloomily enough, it's also the room that is in the worst state, vandalism, as you can obviously see right over here. Many things have been thrown around. I think sadly enough in search of any valuables. And I think definitely burglars have already been inside of this place. Now this is sad, look at the shirts. Those are children clothes. They're all just left unloved. There are so many children in the world, also in less developed countries, that could take so much benefit of the stuff that we are finding currently. I really hope that when I'm a little bit older and have the financial funds to start a charity organization for neglected and unloved items in abandoned buildings, that is a life goal and a dream. And I will do everything I can to make that dream come true, of course, in accordance with the owners or any inheritance. Another secretary's desk over here and yeah, everywhere around, stuff is roaming around. Look over here, 
I think this is their daughter, Monica, and she's getting prepared for a Holy Communion, a very special moment in the Roman Catholicism. Wow. It's great that we could enjoy that too, captured on a beautiful photo. And lastly, we have even more clothes that are just rotting away, left to waste. And I'm afraid they will never be worn again. So, with that last room having showed, I want to close this adventure right over here. And I gotta say, it feels good to be back in Belgium. It feels good to be exploring in my local area. And it feels even best to explore such a beautiful place. And I'm really glad that we had the opportunity to capture it today. I would like to thank Big Banks as well, Carter, for joining me on this exploration. And yeah, it was great to show you around in Europe for the first time. Yeah, man, and I really, really appreciate it. It's this was absolutely amazing. Well, and I hope you think the same as Carter does about this place in general. And I really hope you enjoyed my perspective on this place. Of course, also make sure to check out Big Bang's Carter and check out his perspective as we both have different perspectives in both of our documentaries. You will find this link down in the video description and all that is left for you is if you enjoyed this video, you know the drill. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel down below, turn on the post notification button as well if you don't want to miss out on any future videos. And of course, if you would like to contribute, feel free to check out our Patreon page right down below. And then as always, I would like to thank you for watching once again. And yeah, we will see you on the next adventure. Peace out.